Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship in First Oma Gathering Place. It's lovely to have you joining with us for worship this morning, whether that's on our Facebook page, on our website, or listening to our sermon line. For those of you who have visual, you will see that I'm conducting this service uh, from the pulpit of First Oma Church. Next Sunday, God willing, I will be uh, conducting worship with a congregation in front of me. Uh, you will have received a notification uh, about the opening of our church next Sunday and the various rules and regulations uh, to follow because of social distancing. We will only be able to accommodate 43 um, individual or family units in our church building next Sunday and those seats will be allocated on a first come first served basis. If we have more than 43 uh, families coming out to worship uh, next Sunday, then we have also got the Rowan Hall uh, set out socially distanced as an overflow. So I do hope that we'll be able to accommodate all those who wish to come to worship next Sunday, the 6th of September at 11.30. For those of you who feel a little uncomfortable about coming out to be amongst uh, a crowd of people, uh, please uh, be assured that we hope to live stream our service uh, through our website at 11.30 next Sunday morning. The service will also be recorded and will be available on the Facebook and website later on in the afternoon. And those listening through Sermon Line will also be able to listen to next week's service on the Sermon Line uh, after Sunday tea time. So hopefully everyone will still be able to gather together uh, to worship God, whether we're physically present here in the building or in the Roman Hall or listening and connected from our own homes. In this morning service, there will also be the sacrament of baptism as we baptise James Ray and welcome him into the fellowship of this congregation and more importantly, into the fellowship of Christ's worldwide church. James's baptism took place yesterday morning but has been included um, in today's service so that we, the congregation of First Oma, uh, can celebrate that wonderful occasion for James and for his parents, Jason and Vicky. So let us open our service of worship as we come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of the heavens and earth, we give you thanks for the wonder and the beauty of your creation. We thank you especially, O Lord, for uh, the wonder of human life. And we give thanks, O Lord, for uh, families, for mums and dads and grannies and grandas and aunts and uncles and children and grandchildren. And we pray your blessing will be upon us as we gather together as your family uh, for worship this morning. We thank you that through faith in Jesus Christ, we are united together with you and that uh, as we join together in worship and praise, you hear our praise and you listen to our prayers and you go before us. And we thank you, Lord, for the purposes and plans that you have for each one of our lives. So we pray, Lord, your blessing upon each head bowed here this morning. We pray for their families. We pray for their work situations. We pray for the communities in which they live and we ask, O oh Lord, for your blessing to be upon them today and always. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue in worship as John Campbell leads us in the hymn, King of Kings, Majesty. Thank you. Amen. 
prayer of new appreciation for the community of the church. Let us pray. Lord of the church, what a gift you have given us in the body of Christ, in living stones locally assembled to be a spiritual house. Sometimes I haven't seen my congregation that way, as I have grumbled and complained about my spiritual family. Selfishly looked to my own needs before the interests of others, and carelessly neglected my need to meet with brothers and sisters for their encouragement and mine. Now I see things more clearly, valuing little things like the chat before or after worship that reminds me that someone else cares. Cherishing the opportunity to raise my voice with others in praise of God, even if they, or I, am a little out of tune. Gaining a new sense of awe for the word of God preached, and the way it challenges and encourages my everyday walk with Jesus. Setting much more store on your invitation to ask, seek, and knock in prayer. Now that we have seen you give, found you answering, and known doors opened during the period of pandemic, life under lockdown. Help me not to lose this newfound appreciation for the community of my church as things begin to return to normal. Help me not to take for granted those who lead and serve, but to pray for and support them as they labour in the Lord, listening, learning and lending a hand where I can. Help me to express a fresh commitment to the life of my church and its loving witness to Jesus, experience in those ways that show we belong to him and to one another. Chosen and precious cornerstone, thank you for the people of your choosing that make up my congregation. Built together as one, a holy nation of fellow travellers, your special possession called out of darkness to bear your light. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you to Neville for leading us in the In This Moment prayer. We now come to the sacrament of baptism and I invite the Ray family to come to the front of the church. So welcome to this service, the first service conducted in this building since Sunday the 15th of March. As we emerge from lockdown and adjust to the new norm, it seems fitting that we start a new season of public worship by welcoming through baptism a new member into our church family, Baby James Alexander Ray. <laughs> <laughs> this service is attended only by a small representation of the Ray and Maguire family circles. Socially distanced, hand sanitized, wrapped and traced, and wearing face coverings. There will also be a few changes to the baptism procedures too. Whilst myself and James' parents, Vicky and Jason, do not need to wear face coverings, we will remain socially distanced from one another. And sadly, I won't get to hold baby James for the baptism, but will pour water on his head as his parents hold him over the front. These restrictions are strange, but they enable us to meet safely together for worship, so the minor inconvenience is worth it. This is an important occasion for the wider family circle, as well as for our church family, and so a recording of this service will be included in our online service tomorrow morning, and that will be available to view on our church website and our Facebook page. So let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you this morning, we give thanks for the opportunity to gather together in this church to celebrate the sacrament of baptism. As we do so, we are mindful of your family care for all of us, for your hand of protection upon us in recent days and in recent months, and for your assurance that you will not leave us nor forsake us. We give thanks for the saving love of your Son, Jesus Christ, who welcomed the little children into his arms and blessed them, who showed care and compassion to the sick, the poor and the outcast, and who demonstrated his love for us in that whilst we were still sinners, he died for us on the cross of Calvary. 
We rejoice in the salvation which he offers to us and to the generations which are yet to come. And we come this morning to confess our faith in him and to seek his help and his guidance as we follow him in life. We are mindful that we cannot do this in our own strength, but through the enabling power of your Holy Spirit, who lives in our hearts through faith, and who prompts and guides us to make good decisions and live lives worthy of your name. We confess, Lord, that we do not always listen to your voice, and we do not always make the wisest of choices or follow the right paths in life. And so we seek your forgiveness, and we ask for your help and your guidance for the road ahead. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would make your presence felt amongst us this morning as we celebrate the sacrament of baptism and welcome James into your worldwide church in the name and through the power of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So in preparation for the sacrament of baptism, <coughs> let us listen to the words of Jesus who said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. On the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter said, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. This sacrament is a sign and a seal of the covenant of grace which God has made with us in Jesus Christ. By baptism we are received into his church. Christ <coughs> brings us from death to life, so that having been raised to life in him, we may live as heirs of his kingdom. The children of Christian parents, though they may not understand these things, are within that covenant and they belong to the church. Since James is not yet of an age to speak for himself, his parents and the congregation must make vows so that through Christian nurture in the grace of God, he may come to profess his own faith and serve Christ in the church and in the world. In a moment, once I have the water in the, in the baptismal jug, I will ask you to stand. There is a congregational vow in the Presbyterian Church. Uh, we don't have godparents as you would have in the Church of Ireland. It's the whole congregation who promise uh, to raise um, our children in the teaching of the Church and in the faith and fellowship. And so there will be an opportunity for you gathered here this morning to say, we do, whenever I ask the question. Um, and also for those of you who are watching online, you also are part of this congregation though you're not present with us today. And so I would encourage you to also make your promise to support James in this church as he grows and comes to know Jesus as his Saviour and Lord. So when that time comes, uh, the answer that you will give at home is we do as well. So collectively together we will welcome him in the Christ church. So I just need to uh, prepare. water James, not touched by any hands, nothing. Freshly clean silver jug, courtesy of our clerk of session. So we are now ready for the baptism. Would everyone please stand and with Jason and Vicky and Kayleigh. And if Alex wants to, you can come up as well, I'll ask him, baptise James. Lovely. So, to Jason and Vicky, and also to Katie and Alex. In presenting James for baptism, do you profess your faith in God as your creator and father? In Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, and in the Holy Spirit as your sanctifier and guide. I do. And then will you, by God's help, provide a Christian home and bring James up in the worship and teaching of the church, so that
so that he may come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And then to the congregation. Do you who now in Christ's name receive James into the fellowship of the church, promise with God's help, so to order your congregational life and witness, that he may grow up in the knowledge and love of God, and be continuously surrounded by Christian example and influence. Thank you. James and Becky. We will bring James over to the, the baptismal font and I will pour water on his head as a sign and a stain of the cleansing power of Jesus' blood over sin and death. James Alexander Wren, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and abide with you forevermore. James is now received according to Christ's command into the membership of the Holy Universal and Apostolic Church, and he is engaged to be the Lord's. Please be seated and we will pray for James. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you that in your infinite mercy and goodness you have promised to be not only our God, but also the God and Father of our children, and you have received James by baptism into the life of your church. Guard and keep him all his days. May your love hold him. May your truth guide him. May your joy delight him. May he grow strong in body and in mind and come to faith in Jesus as Saviour and Lord. Make his home a place of safety and security, and help his parents to teach him your truth and lead him in your ways. We pray to you for his sister, Gilly, and his brother, Alex, as they love and care for James, and grow together as a happy, loving, and caring family through all the joys and challenges in life. We pray for all families in this congregation, May you be cherished in all our homes. May your presence in our midst transform our lives. And may all our children grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. A Presbyterian and baptismal service would not be a baptismal service without the singing of the ironic blessing. So I'm delighted that four members of our church choir, our organist and singer John, and singers Chris, Margaret and David will now sing the Aaronic Blessing which was recorded in their own homes and then put together by Peter for this special service. The Aaronic Blessing.
Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, or the god of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord, to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us out, and our parents up out of Egypt, from that land of slavery, and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey, and among all the nations through which we travelled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Thank you to Flo for reading to us from God's word, Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 to 18. Over the last number of weeks, we have journeyed with the children of Israel from captivity in Egypt through the desert towards the promised land. In today's reading uh, in Joshua chapter 24, we come to the end of that story in a sense. Moses had led them in the wilderness for 40 years, and then Joshua, Moses' successor, led them into the promised land where they were able to settle down and to make a living there in the land that flowed with milk and honey. It's now coming to the end of Joshua's life and so he gathers the people together and he challenges them. He challenges them as to who it is they are going to serve. As for him and his house, he will serve the Lord. Joshua, like Moses, was a man of God who sought to follow God all the days of his life. And as his days were coming to a close, he wanted to ensure that the children of Israel would choose wisely. And so he gathered them and asked them would they be willing to make that commitment to God. And as we gather here this morning, we too are challenged who are we going to serve in our lives? Are we going to choose to follow God? Or instead, will we choose the things of this world? This morning, Vicky and Jason made promises to raise uh, their son James in the teaching of the church, in the fellowship of the church, so that he would come to know the Lord for himself. As for them and their house, they will serve the Lord. And we as a congregation promised to be a family to James and to all the other children who belong to our congregation so that they can be nurtured in the Christian faith and that they too will choose to serve the Lord for themselves. But I suppose like everything when we have a choice to make we have to weigh up the pros and the cons. Why would we choose to follow God? Why not choose to follow something else? Something that this world has to offer. Well, Joshua reminded the people of why they should choose God. He had shown himself to be gracious towards them. He had seen how desperate they were in Egypt in slavery. He heard their cries for release and for freedom. And in his grace, he responded leading them out of captivity in Egypt towards the promised land, giving them a leader like Moses who would lead the way and lead the people in the ways of God. So God was gracious to them. God was also faithful to them. In the desert, as they wandered day by day, he did not abandon them but he provided for them. We looked at the story of the manna and the quails. We also looked at how he protected them from the other tribes that they encountered in the desert and how he guided them by a cloud of, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. We also looked at how God guided them in how to live by giving them the Ten Commandments, showing them what was necessary in order to live for God and to live life to the full. 
So God had proved himself to the children of Israel, that he was gracious to them, that he was faithful to them, and that he was good to them. And so Joshua, having reminded them of all that God had done for them, he asked them, who do you choose to serve? And they responded by saying, we choose to serve the Lord. They made a commitment to God and they sought to follow him. And it's the same for us today on this journey that we have been taking through lockdown. Uh, we have seen how God has been gracious to us, how he has provided for us, how he has led us to lead a life that is full and with hope for the future. And so as we come out of lockdown, as we begin to go back out into our communities and into our jobs and into the wider world again, we are challenged this morning too. Who are you going to serve this morning? Are you going to choose the God who has been gracious, faithful and good to you? Are you going to choose to follow Jesus Christ who leads us in the way of life in all its fullness and who offers to us an eternity beyond our wildest imagining? Are we going to trust in him and seek to follow him all the days of our lives? So as Jason and Vicky have made promises this morning, uh, to raise Jason in the teaching of the church and to follow Jesus in their homes. So we too have an opportunity once again to reaffirm our commitment to the Lord Jesus and to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your graciousness towards us in a time of lockdown. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us and how you provided all that we needed when we needed it. And we ask, O oh Lord, for your continued protection to be upon us as we move out of our confinement and into the wider world. We pray that you will bless us, that you will encourage us, that you will strengthen us in service for you, and that you will help us to hold true to the promises uh, that we have made that we will seek to serve you, to put you first in our lives, and to live life according to your ways. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to fulfil the promises that we all make this morning. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one in whom we place our hope, our faith, and our trust. Amen. We bring our service to a close as we sing that wonderful hymn, Oh Jesus, I have promised. Before we sing, I'll finish with the words of the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen.